Welcome to the poker vlog everyone. This is session number 24. For this one, we're gonna be playing 3-5 No Limit at the South Point Casino. It has a max buy-in of 1500. If you're new to the channel, I record and share every single No Limit session that I play. So hopefully you guys can find some value in some form or another. And uh, this one's action packed, so let's get right into the hands. We grab the max $1,500 buy-in and our first playable hand is ace-10 for middle position. I put in a raise to 15. We get calls from the button and the big blind. So we go three ways to a flop of queen-10-4 with two hearts. Action checks to me. With middle pair and the ace of hearts, I continue with a bet of 20. Button folds, big blind sticks around. We pick up two pair on the turn with the ace of spades. He checks it to me. I bet 35 for value against queen x hands. If he has king jack, which is reasonable, we're going to find out right here. He just calls the 35, which is good news. The river brings the best card in the deck, the ace of diamonds, giving us the second nuts now. He checks to us, and I toss out 110 for value, and he folds right away. Nice to get a premium run out to start the session. Next we have pocket sixes in middle position. Under the gun player opens for 20, next player calls, I call, small blind calls, and action is to the big blind. He sticks in a 3 bet to 125. He has about 1200 behind. Action folds to me. The opponent looks to be a capable player, which means he doesn't always have jacks or better here. We are deep and in position with a hand that will be easy to get away from with some bad flops, so I make the call here, and we go heads up to a flop of 3-3-5. Three, three, Great flop for our actual hand and calling range, as I'm more likely to have pocket fives or pocket threes. He makes a continuation bet as expected of 80. So I think we have a pretty standard just call here, as I wouldn't be raising with fives full or quad threes very often in position. So I make the call and we see a deuce of hearts on the turn. So we pick up a gut shot as well. Now he sizes up and leads with a bet of 235. Now it's our turn to go into the tank for a bit, and I'll be honest, a spot like this against a good player is essentially a guessing game because he likely takes the exact same line here with pocket aces, pocket kings, as he would with squeezing hands like ace-jack, ace-queen, ace-king, maybe ace-five suited. So I eventually decide on a call here, and the river brings a seven of diamonds, shouldn't be any help. He's in the tank for about 10 seconds, is he going to pull the trigger here and jam it? He does not. He eventually checks, and I check back. He says ace high, shows ace king, so luckily we were on the right side of this one and take down a nice pot. Next we have 6-7 suited from under the gun. I'm in an aggressive mood, so I open the action for 15. We get four callers. So we go five ways to a flop of 6-3-3 three, three with two hearts. Action checks to us, and I lead with a bet of 40. Next player calls, and the small blind calls as well. Three of us now to an eight of hearts on the turn. The flush gets there. I'm done with it if anyone bets. However, the small blind checks, I check, and the last opponent checks. I think the small blind is most likely to have a flush here. Um, I think the last opponent would bet if he hit the hearts. So River brings a three of clubs, giving us a full house now. Small blind checks. I make a small value bet of 50 against flushes. Next player folds, and the small blind does indeed have the queen seven of hearts, but folds it face up. So we get a free lucky river card and pick up another nice pot. Very next hand, it's our big blind with the five eight of spades. Under the gun opens for 15. Three players call. I call the 10 more to close the action. And again, we go five ways to a flop of queen jack nine with two spades. So pretty sweet flop with a gut shot and a flush draw. I check, and under the gun player fires out an overbet of 105. Button makes the call, and it's back on us. With this size bet and a caller in the middle, we could very well be drawing dead to each of our draws. Even if our flush is live, I don't think either opponent is going to pay me off, so I decide to lay this one down. The board actually runs out uh, like a blank on the turn and an eight on the river. And the under the gun player did show queen 10 of spades and the other player showed ace 10. So we were pretty much drawing dead to a 10 for the idiot end of the straight. So luckily we got out of that one only losing 15 bucks. Next we have the five eight of clubs on the button. Middle position player opens for 20, one player calls. You know I love these hands in position. I make the call and big blind calls as well. We go four ways to a flop of eight, seven, four with two hearts. So we have top pair and a gutter. Checks to the preflop raiser who bets 40. Next player folds. I'm not going anywhere just yet. I call and the big blind calls. Down to three of us now and we see a 10 of clubs on the turn. Both players check it to me this time. 
I should probably check back here for a free one, but in the moment, I think I might have the best hand. I bet 110 to charge flush draws, and surprisingly, both players call. I'm most concerned with the small blind calling my bet with another player behind, so we're looking for some help on the river here. We don't get it though. The river is actually the worst, bringing the ace of diamonds. Now an ace high flush gets there with a top pair of aces, so both players check to me. Tough spot to turn my hand into a bluff as I think one of my opponents hit this card, so I check back and big blind shows queens and the original razor shows pocket jack, so we actually did hit the perfect bluff card but couldn't pull the trigger. I think I made a mistake though by betting the turn on that one because I really wasn't sure if I was betting for value, so I need to be barreling the river if I decide to bet that turn. Lesson learned. 10 minutes later we have queen jack suited from under the gun plus one. Under the gun player limps and I race to 20. Hijack, button, and under the gun limper make the call. We go four ways to a flop of queen 6-4 with two clubs. So we flop top pair but no redraw. Action checks to me and I bet 75 to deny equity against straight and flush draws. Next player, who I know well, makes the call. Other players fold and we go heads up to a five of diamonds on the turn. I don't like this card one bit. It's all over this opponent's range for sure. I check for pot control and honestly just had a bad feeling. He fires out a big bet, 225, action back on us. Not a great spot to be calling here when I think he, at the very worst, has a semi-bluff. We're completely dead to all of his value hands like straights and sets, so I make the lay down here and ask Coach C to show the bluff. Please Please show the bluff. Show Come on, Cedric. Come on, Cedric. So Cedric, for the vlog. Come on. We only get to see one, but it's a seven of clubs. It's a big card. Could be losing to seven, eight, three, seven, five, seven as a semi bluff, maybe queen, seven of clubs. But uh, I think that's a good lay down overall. Nice hand, sir. Next, we have King Jack suited from under the gun plus one. $10 button straddle is on. I open for 40. Player on my left calls, and everyone else folds. We go heads up to a flop of ace three five rainbow. We've got nothing but a good flop for our early position raising range. I don't think my opponent has many ace x hands to be calling 40 from early position, and he likely three bets with ace king. He can reasonably have ace queen, but I think a medium sized pair is the most likely, so I lead for a bet of 50 to rep an ace. He's nice enough to show the pocket tens as he lays it down. Even though he had the best hand at the moment, it's a good lay down in the long run as he's crushed most of the time there against a uh, Big, bigger over pairs and ace king. I just happen to be at the bottom of my range on that one. A few hands later, we have pocket nines in the small blind. Under the gun straddle for $10 is on. One player limps and it folds to us. I'll mix in flatting and raising here. I think we have the best hand. I take the aggressive route and make it 40 to play and hoping to narrow down the field a bit, but the big blind and straddler and limper all make the call. So we go four ways to a glorious flop. Nine, seven, deuce, rainbow. We flop the nuts on a beautiful board. Not worried about any bigger sets getting there. So I decide to check this one, hoping to induce a bet or let an opponent hit some over cards. Unfortunately, all three players check behind. We get a queen of hearts on the turn. Time to get some money in there now. Maybe someone hit a queen. I make a small bet of 50. Player on my left calls and the other two fold. The river is probably the worst card in the deck, bringing in the king of hearts, so it does complete both straight and flush draws. I still think I should be betting for value to target hands like queen 10, queen jack, king queen, ace queen, so I make a bet of 110. He goes into the tank for a bet and decides on a raise to 310. 200 and more to call for us now. Now it's our turn in the tank. After some thought, I just don't think this opponent is going for value with two pair here. And I need to give him credit for calling 50 on the turn with two opponents behind for having a pretty good draw. I should probably be calling some of the time here, but do eventually find the fold button and show him the set. And my man is nice enough again to show the camera the nuts with ace four of hearts. Even though we didn't get a nice result on that one, I still like the check on the flop. I think my bet size on the turn was a mistake. However, I think half the pot or two thirds pot would have been better. Next, we are in the big blind with pocket jacks. Player in middle position opens for 20, button calls, and action's on us. We've been aggressive all night, so let's stick with it. Although sometimes I will mix in flatting with jacks from the big blind. I decide to put in the three bet to 80. It's back to the original Razor who wants to play for more. Sticks out a four bet to 250. Action folds to us. 
I think we can safely say he's at the top of his range here with queens or better. Ace-king suited is probably the worst of his holdings, but we're both deep. He still has 1,100 behind, and we have it covered. So I make the call for 170 more, heads up to a flop, king, jack, eight with two hearts. So we spike middle set, we check it over to him. He eventually decides on a bet of 150. I think he's doing this with all of his big hands, aces, ace-king, queens, set of kings. I want to get the money in now before the board gets uglier for ace king and pocket aces. If he has pocket kings, well, he's getting a double up. I put in the check raise to 420. He goes into the tank for about 15 seconds before announcing all in for about 700 more. We can't fold middle set, so I call. So we get lucky to spike the jack against pocket aces there. He could have just as easily had pocket kings, then we're on the other side of a $2,700 pot or so. But uh, we get the clean run out, three of diamonds, eight of diamonds, dodge the ace, and pick up a huge one there. <laughs> just 20 minutes later, jacks are back. We are under the gun this time and open for 15. Three players call the 15, and action gets to the small blind, who puts in a 3-bet to 70. I haven't seen this player 3-bet yet, and he has about 2,500 behind. Similar to last hand, I feel like we're in a set mining situation here. I make the call, and that brings in all three of the other opponents. We're in a great game here. We got 5-way action to a flop of 10-8-4 rainbow. We have an overpair to the board. The small blind leads right out, though, for 340, and action's on us. I think this is a pretty easy lay down here given the opponent and action behind us. I'm expecting the small blinds aces or kings to get snapped here by a smaller set but everyone does lay it down and he shows pocket queens for the best hand. His hand did play pretty face up though and he definitely lost some value with such a large bet. If he leads out for 150 it would have been more difficult to find the fold button there. I still think we could have though because what are we beating? I mean we're only beating pocket nines, ace 10, ace king, ace queen. So we're not beating any of the smaller sets or any over pairs, so pretty easy fold. Next we have queen nine suited in the small blind. $10 button straddle is on. Action folds to the cutoff who raises to 30. Straddler calls. Both are deep and in late position. Feels like a great time to squeeze. Even if I get called, we'll be playing uh, some deep stack poker. I put in a 3-bet to 175. Player on my left puts a chip on his cards. Uh-oh, he has a decision. He's in the tank for a bit. Ends up saying nice bet, lays it down. The other opponents do as well, so luckily that one gets through. Just one orbit later, back in the small blind with ace-queen offsuit. Button straddle for $10 is on. Plus one player limps, and action is folded to us. We must punish that limper. I put in a raise to 50. The early limper does make the call, and the straddler defends as well. We go three ways to a flop of 10-10-6 rainbow. Decent chance we still have the best hand here, and if not, hopefully we can fold out some smaller pocket pairs. You can see the player after me check out a turn. He thought he was first. I put out a bet of 80. The next player folds, but the straddler sticks around with the call. The player on the button ran up a $500 stack into 6000 by this point, so I know this call doesn't necessarily mean a 10 for trips. It's more likely a pair of 6s, or hands like 7, 8, 8, 9 for a gut shot. So we go heads up to a turn. A deuce of diamonds. We can't be entirely sure he doesn't have trips, so I slow down for pot control and check. He checks back. This player will typically bet his big hand, so I rule out a 10 now. River brings a king of diamonds, putting out running flush and a nice overcard, which is much better for me than him. I may be bluffing with the best hand here, but can't let a 6 or a small pocket pair take this pot from me, so I size up with a bet of 320 to put pressure on those holdings, and he makes the laydown. Next, we pick up pocket threes in the big blind. Under the gun raises to 10. Middle position and button make the call. I call. We go four ways to a flop of jack, jack, three, rainbow. We flop a full house. I lead right out into the field for 15. Next player folds. Middle position player calls and button folds. Feels like my opponent has a jack. After all, I have both threes, so that makes the most sense. The turn brings a nine of spades. 
Now I check it to him to induce a bet. I expect him to bet with or without a jack, to be honest, but he doesn't. He checks it back. River brings an eight of hearts. I still think he likely has a jack. Maybe he just checked back for deception. So now I lead for 50 for value on the river. And to my surprise, he gathers out a raise to 200. What just happened here? He called 10 pre-flop for middle position, called my flop bet, so ace jack, king jack, queen jack, 10 jack, all makes sense. And the way this hand played out, that's the range of hands that I think he's most likely to have, so I decide to go for more value, and I put in a three bet to 500 to target those trip jack holdings. He goes into the tank, which is good news. Okay, before we see the result of this hand, let's talk about how bad of a raise I decided this really is, because why is he raising on the river here? It's either a bluff or it's for value, right? So what are his value hands? I think his potential value hands are ace jack and king jack, maybe queen jack he puts in a raise on the river, but he also has hands like jack eight, jack nine, pocket eights, pocket nines. So it's more likely he has a better hand. So for me to put in a three bet here, I have to know that he has ace jack or king jack. And I also have to know that he's going to call my re-raise with a hand like ace jack or king jack and do I really think he's going to do that? Probably not. So let's continue. The longer he takes, the more I'm starting to feel better. I feel like it's a snap call if I'm beat. So a little bit more time goes by and he's only worried about jack nine is what he says. So now I'm disgusted. I know we're sunk. He ends up calling. I show the threes full. He shows pocket eights for a bigger full house on the river. I should have been able to piece that one together and just find a call there with bottom full house. Jack nine, jack eight are also decent possibilities, so I really do not like that re-raise on the river since, like I said, not only do I have to be right that he just has trip jacks, I also have to know that he's going to call that re-raise with only trip jacks to make sense. And I really wasn't positive on that, so that's another good lesson learned from this hand. Next we have pocket queens. The under the gun straddle is on for $10. I'm first to act and open it up to 30 it folds back to the straddler who defends. He makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of ace 10 3 with two diamonds. He checks it to me, and I bet 20. He makes the call. Turn pairs the board with another ace, and he checks it to me again. I feel like he most likely has a 10 or a diamond draw, so I continue with a bet of 45 for value, and he makes the call again. River brings a nine of clubs. Diamonds miss, and he checks it to me for a third time. My gut is telling me to go for value here against a 10, but I'm a little gun shy because of that last mistake. So I decide to just check back in case he is calling with ace X and he shows Jack 10. So we take this one down, but miss some value as well. Last hand, I was less sure and went for more value. This hand, I was more sure I was ahead and didn't go for value. So not loving my play on last hand or this hand. I suck. <laughs> so that looks too good. To the last hand of the evening, we get a monster, queen deuce suited in the big blind. Middle position player raises to 25, two players call, and for 20 more, I jump in the action. We're here, we're having some fun. We go four ways to a flop, queen, nine, four, with one heart. We flop top pair, backdoor flush draw, I check it, original raiser checks, and next player bets 50. Button folds, and well, we didn't play this hand to fold when we hit top pair, I call, and next player folds. So we go heads up to a 10 of diamonds on the turn. I check to the aggressor and he bets another 50. We still have top, top pair, so we're not going anywhere for 50. I call, river is a blank seven of clubs. I check and he goes for a $50 bet again, but looked way less confident than he did on the flop. Easy call for 50 with 350 in the middle. I call and he shows ace eight for ace high and we take down a $400 pot with a garbage hand and recoup that $300 mistake with the pocket threes. Shortly after this hand, the player directly across from me, you can see right there with the drink, pukes all over himself and the floor. So that's going to wrap up this session, guys. It's about 5 a.m. in the game for 1500, out for 2203. Had a, a good time, though, playing tonight. Bunch of great people at the table. So uh, let's uh, wrap it up and see you at the end of the video. All right, guys, thanks for watching session number 24. Hope you enjoyed the hands. If you did, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button to support an up and coming poker vlogger. I really appreciate it. Pretty fun session today. I think I played okay overall. I don't like the, the pocket threes. I think that was a bit of an overplay. I think you have to be really sure of your opponent on that one to put in a three bet there uh, for it to make sense. And uh, I really wasn't. So 
Other than that, a few other small mistakes that uh, we can improve upon, and that's what we're here to do is talk about those and, and uh, prepare for the next time. You know, we're making these decisions quickly in the moment, so we're all gonna make mistakes. As always, here are the stats after every session. We put the No Limit Hold'em uh, cash game stats up there as we go along here, every single vlog. So we're doing okay, got that win streak going again. And uh, that's about it. Stay tuned for the next one on Sunday. Stay to the end for a cool trick shot. And uh, we'll catch you guys next uh, week. Have a good one, everybody.